Okay, today I'm going to be answering uh, one of the most frequently asked questions that I get, and that is uh, regarding my scope camera setup. Um, I actually kind of stole this idea from, from Ted, uh, from Ted's holdover. He started filming through the scope. Um, video caught my attention about five years ago. It was the first time I'd seen someone filming through their scope, and it was really cool to see that pellet flying in slow motion. So probably about a year ago, I went out and I, I bought a similar scope camera setup, and that was the Casio Exilim camera and the uh, Sieben DKA2 mount, also called the Orion Steadypix mount. This one is made by Orion, um, and it, it worked well for me for, for quite a long time, but there were quite a few drawbacks to this system. Um, so I'll run, I'll run through quickly how this camera mount works. Okay, first of all, you attach the camera to the back of this mount. Um, quite, it just attaches to the uh, threads, the threads that you attach the camera to the tripod, attaches straight onto the back of this mount. You can adjust the mount forward or backward to the, the right eye relief for whatever scope you're using. And this is a very uni universal mount in that um, you can attach it to almost any size um, ocular piece. But the problem with this mount is that it talks quite easily. So even if you attach it really tight on the back of your scope, if you move it around, you'll find that um, you'll, you'll set it up perfectly and then you bump it just a little bit and it, it moves around. So it's not a very solidly made mount. You can see that um, I've had to make quite a few changes to it to make it work properly out in the field. The first change I've made is I've put these two little pieces of, of black PVC pipe over here to stop this one piece from, from moving sideways um, and that kind of keeps the, the scope mount fixed properly onto the scope without moving up and down. And the second um, change that I've made is I've put a whole, a whole lot of epoxy around this joint where the vertical piece attaches to the horizontal piece because that was coming loose all the time and it wasn't just moving sideways but it was moving up and down as well. So this, it just felt like the scope mount was moving around a lot it was not secure, I had to keep adjusting it, and as a result, the footage did not come out as well. The second problem is that you get a lot of glare from the sun coming in over the top. So you almost wanna put like almost a bit of a sunshade on front of the camera, and it's very difficult to do that. You'd have to make one yourself. So I'll show you how this, this scope mount works quickly using the good old Hawk Sidewinder scope. I'll just attach it to the back here. Tighten it down, and it fits on just like that. Very simple, uh, it works pretty well, but there's a, a camera mount out there now which is much better than, than the Orion camera mount. It's called the Eagle Vision mount. You can get it off eBay. I'll actually put the, the website right down here on the screen. But essentially this, this mount attaches directly to your scope and it's made for the Hawk range of scopes specifically, and for the, the Casio camera. Um, the Eagle Vision comes with a small piece that looks like this, which is essentially made to fit on to the back of the Hawk Sidewinder tactical line of scopes. So it screws in there, you take another ring that screws directly over that, over that piece, And then lastly, you've got this piece over here. And you see it's got a whole, a whole lot of these uh, finger tightening screws on the side. Now, this setup is a little bit more complicated in that the camera itself needs to have a piece epoxied to it, um, which is a little bit daunting for some people, but it's, it's actually pretty easy to do. It's a little ring that epoxies onto the front of the Casio scope and then allows this piece to be screwed directly onto it. Just like that, very simple. Once it's on, it's on. And from there, it basically slides over this piece. Once that's on, you can turn your camera on. The camera looks directly down the scope and you get a very clear sight picture. Now, the one problem with the setup is that if you don't have this Hawk Sidewinder scope, this piece won't screw into the scope. So you've got to make a plan. And that's where some of the other pieces that come with the Eagle Vision cam come in. 
So I've unscrewed this piece here from the Sidewinder tactical scope. And let's take, at the, take a look at the next scope, just, just as an example. So this is the Hawk Frontier scope. I've done a review of the scope recently. Really like the scope, but it doesn't have any threads on the eyepiece, which means that it's impossible to actually attach that, uh, that eyepiece on. So what would you do with a scope like this? Well, you could use the Orion camera mount, which would be the, the most easy, but you can also use the Eagle Vision mount using this, this larger piece. This piece basically is wide enough to slide right over the ocular piece all the way in and clamp down. But there's a trick to this because you've got to clamp it down uniformly from every side so that it, the camera itself is pointed at the right angle and at the right height to look straight through the scope. Otherwise you're going to get vignetting on, on all sides of the scope. The scope also has to be at the right uh, eye relief, otherwise this won't work either. But once that's on, you can fit the scope cam directly over it, straight as you would with the, the sidewinder that I just showed you. And it attaches on like, like that. So it's a bit more chunky, it's a bit more cumbersome, but once it's on, it's on, and it works very, very well. Um, another question that's come up um, is regarding the Eagle Vision mount and how on the Sidewinder, the Sidewinder Tactical, once it's on, it's looking straight through the scope, which means that if your scope is, if the turrets aren't zeroed, in other words, if the scope is not at its natural zero, uh, then the scope, the camera won't be looking directly down the scope and your sight picture won't be that good. Um, there is a way you can overcome this, and that's by using the larger attachment piece, sliding this piece over that smaller piece here, instead of, the, instead of this one, and that will allow you to fiddle around with it as well and get the scope looking directly, the camera looking directly down the scope. So that's one way around that. And last thing I want to mention, this is the new Sidewinder scope with the flip-up caps. I really like the flip-up caps and I'd actually suggest getting this scope over the older Sidewinder because it just, to me, it feels like a, a better made scope. The glass on this new Sidewinder seems to me a little bit better than on the tactical version. The flip-up caps are really nice if you want to put the, um, your, your um, aim points on the back. But the problem with this scope is um, even if you take these lens caps off, uh, this piece that screws into the back of the Sidewinder Tactical does not fit on this scope. The threads over here are different, which means that, again, you're going to have to use, set up something, something like this, um, where the, the, the scope mount fits right over the scope instead of into it. But that's it. That's the, that's the video. Um, it's all I can really say about my scope cam setup. Um, there's not much more to it. That's what I use. And I'll put links to both of these products down in the video description so that if you want to do the same thing, you can go ahead and do it. Um, I hunt, I use the setup for hunting, but I think that it's, it's best, uh, one of the best things about the setup is that you can go to the range, you can shoot in slow motion, and you can see exactly how your pellet is flying. That will tell you whether your groups are bad because of your own shooting, or whether your groups are bad because of the way that the pellet's behaving in flight. You'll be able to see which pellets are, are flying skew because of the way you've taken the shot and which pellets are flying skew because of the way the gun's shooting and you can correct those errors. That's the huge strong point of the setup and that's probably one of the biggest factors that's contributed to um, my growth and, and my being able to actually shoot better um, as as the time goes on over the last year or so, I've, I've learned a lot from the setup. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.